So now we'll discuss about motion in a plane. So when you talk about an object moving in a two-dimensional plane, we call it as motion in a plane or motion in 2D. Okay. So here mainly we discuss about projectile motion. So when I say projectile, we have a misconception that it should always have a parabolic path. Projectile motion can be anything which is for traveling under the influence of some force. Generally, it can be under the gravitational force or it can be under the electrostatic force. So what is projectile? Basically, something which is targeted to hit an object, right? So this one, we call it as projectile motion also, where here in this content, the object will travel under the influence of gravity. So when I take the x-axis and y-axis, suppose I throw an object like this, and what will happen is the object travels in a path followed so if I take this angle to be theta, and if I take the initial velocity to be u, then this can be called as u cos theta, and this can be called as u sin theta. Okay. Now, from here, I'll draw, if I drop a perpendicular, then this height is called as h max, and this distance is called as range. Okay. So when you apply the equations of motion, along x and y direction, okay, when you apply the equations of motion along x and y direction, then you can say s along x is equal to ux into t plus half into ax into t square. Right? So displacement along x direction is this thing. Similarly, if you apply it along y direction, s along y is equal to ui into t plus half into ay into t square. Now the points to be noted are initial velocity along x direction is u cos theta. Initial velocity along y direction is u sin theta. Acceleration along x direction is zero. Acceleration along y direction is minus zero. So if you take all these values and substitute, right, and then you will get different kinds of variables. Now, first let's try to calculate the parameter called h max, the maximum height traveled by an object. So whenever you are talking about maximum height traveled by an object, the only formula that we will use is v square minus u square is equal to 2s because at the highest point, we know that the velocity generally becomes zero. So I can write v y square minus u y square is equal to 2 into a y into s y. What is the value of v y? So 0 minus u y is u square sine square theta is equal to 2 into acceleration along y direction is minus g and the displacement along y direction is h max. From here I can write h max is equal to u square sine square theta divided by 2 g. Second, when you talk about the range, so range is corresponding to the horizontal distance. So we can say S along X is equal to UX into T plus half into AX into T square. So displacement along X direction, if I call it as R, the initial velocity along X direction is U cos theta. And the time taken by the object to go from point O to B is called as time of flight. So u cos theta into tf. So let me have this equation. So I'm forced to find the value of time of flight. So for time of flight, what we can do is we will write t 
P is equal to U plus A. Okay. This we will write it along Y direction. So velocity along Y direction, if you see, whatever is the initial velocity with which you projected the object, it will be the same velocity with which it will go and hit the bottom also. Okay. Because you are ignoring the air resistance. So it will be minus u cos theta because this is measured in downward direction is equal to upward direction is u cos theta minus g into time of flight. So time of flight, if you try to calculate, it will come out as 2u sin theta divided by g. Okay. If I take this 2u sin theta divided by g and substitute it here, okay, then I will get r is equal to u cos theta into the time of flight is 2u sin theta divided by g or if the u square into 2 sin theta cos theta the whole divided by g or u square sin 2 theta divided by g. Now, for the range to be maximum, so you know the formula for range is u square sin 2 theta divided by g. So for range to be maximum, 2 theta should be equal to 90 degrees, which implies theta should be equal to 45 degrees. Means if you project an object obliquely with respect to the horizontal at an angle of 45 degrees. Okay, here one point to be noted is the value of theta that we have taken at the angle horizontal. In some questions, they give you with vertical and confusion. So, if they give you with vertical, if the angle with vertical is given as theta, in all the four you are supposed to apply 90 minus theta. Because the derivation is done with all the angles taken with respect to the horizontal. Okay. So, theta is equal to 45 degrees will give you the maximum range of a projectile. Okay. So, only these are the concepts. Now, you give So, going to solve problems for the first question. So, A vector is equal to I cap. Hmm. Okay. So, you have a coplanar vector C such that A dot C. then you need to find the C vector. So C vector, you will assume it to be C1 I cap plus C2 J cap plus C3 K cap. Do it pass it in. So do the dot product with each and equate them. This you have already run it. Do you remember? Huh? Yes. Huh.
So what I propose to do, you need to multiply only the corresponding coefficients. No. When you do the dot product between A and C, you will get C1 plus C2. By rewriting extra steps is equal to, when you're doing it with B, you will get C1 minus C2. When you're doing A dot B, it is zero. Why zero? Look at the coefficients. No. What are you supposed to do when you have a dot a vector dot b vector? You need to multiply the coefficients. One into one minus one into one. Okay. So that will be equal to zero. So c1 plus c2 is zero and c1 minus c2 is zero. So 2c1 is zero, which implies c1 is also. How can you get something like this? There is no option. A vector is I cap with A vector. B vector is I cap with the magnitude of cocaine and with you. I made a mistake. See, the question is the magnitude of coplanar vectors. That's the if C is a coplanar vector, then find this expression. Then A dot B dot There is a mistake in the question. There is a mistake. What we did is right. The approach is right. But there is a problem with some numbers in the question because the solution they have given 2a and something is not there. 2a is not there. Okay. Wrong difference. Look at the next one. Had it moved in a straight line, then the initial velocity direction would have been the same. No? Read the question carefully. Thank 
Next. So you know the displacement time graph. So in the displacement time graph, what does slope tell you? So slope displacement time graph, slope is velocity. Area is nothing. When you talk about velocity time graph, slope gives you acceleration and velocity uh, area gives you displacement. So basically when you're drawing the graph, right? If this is the graph, then you find the slope. Slope is y by x. So y by x is displacement by time is velocity. Whereas area is y into x. So displacement into time is no physical quantity. In a similar way, when you take velocity time graph, d by t is acceleration, d into t is displacement. Okay. So what is the rate of compliance point? So, half of the range means range generally comes only for parabolic parts. So, it has come to this point. This is H max. This distance is R. So, exactly at half of the range. Reach the highest point. Okay. Now, what are we supposed to do? How do you draw the displacement time graph? So, if you draw a displacement time graph for it, okay. So, what is the displacement of the particle? Displacement of the particle is maximum height along y direction. So, displacement of the particle is, and this is happening exactly in half of the time of flight. Okay. So, when you represent this point, what does it represent? In what does it represent? So, at that point, is the object accelerating or decelerating? The whole motion of the object, the object decelerating or accelerating? So, it is standing like this velocity is in this direction. Acceleration in this direction. No problem. Velocity and acceleration are in opposite direction. What is that? So, whenever it pass, right, the projectile will be traveling under the influence of gravity. Always the velocity is in upward direction till it reaches the maximum point. So, till the maximum point it is decelerating, after that it is accelerating. So, that's what happens. So, what What 
for the formula for things. U square sine two theta divided by G. Somewhere approximately five point something. Is there an option of five point something? So they were bought at six point three because they were taken G as nine point eight, but nine point eight is the SF value. Okay, so they are Then we need to find C. C R1 is equal to U square sine 30 divided by G R. So 1.5 into 10 divided by 2 is equal to U square. So U square is equal to 7.5 meter square plus so R is equal to U square by G. No, you will get 0 0.75. Point seven five is the answer. Concentrate. So it's one point something. So okay, it's in kilometers square per second square. So sine thirty is one point. Yeah. So we get it now. Hmm, that's what I wrote half. This and this we get cancelled. One point five into five is seven point five. So R is equal to U square, maximum range is sine when, when 45 degrees. So when you project it at 45 degrees, you will get sine 90 by G. So 7.5 divided by G is 10.75. And then substitute it back. So always we should come in the reverse. Whatever they are asking, R is equal to U square sine 90 by G is what they are asking. So look at the unknowns. R is what you need to find. For you to find R2, you need U square. So where will you get that U square from, from the first given condition? Then start applying it, find out U square, substitute it. But you need not find out U square directly. I mean, you need not find U at all. Take U square, substitute it, and then solve it. Do the problems in this way. I, I, that, that's because 
Oh, I wrote one point five here. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, it was my mistake. It is implies one point five into ten. Uh, into two. Okay. So this will be thirty. Thirty. Uh, thirty divided by three. Ten is two. Hmm. This x is how much you need to find that. So the object is projected with root two gh. The height is six. Clear? S along x is equal to u x into t plus half into a x into t square. This one, sir. So, S along X is what you need to find. X is equal to, that's not a straight line, it's a parabolic path. X is equal to root 2 GH into, you need to calculate the time it takes. Yeah, what, uh, what happened? What? Today. You got that. You are from which school? Sanak Academy. Sanak which grade are you in? Okay. So it is on Sunday. Look at the date, no? Will you get an invitation? Invitation, invitation. So, you can use v square minus u square. Or you can use b is equal to u plus a t along x direction. When you do this, right? Velocity along x direction. That, that is the velocity with which it is reaching here. v x is equal to root 2 g h plus acceleration along x direction is 0. Okay. Now, if you use b square minus u square is equal to 2as along x direction. We think displacement to be 0. This is equal to ut plus r to t square. Hmm. Got it. So, you need to calculate the time it takes for the particle to come and hit this point. So, apply S is equal to ut plus half a t square along y direction. So, displacement along y direction is minus h is equal to u y 0 plus half into a y is minus g into t square, which implies t square is equal to 2 h divided by g. 
take this and substitute it here. So x will be equal to root two gh and t will be root of two h by g. So this will be two h into root g. Okay, two h into root g. Is that an option like that? You understood the method. So you have to do the permutation and combination between 